lot of people have missed out on an, an efficient and reliable way to get ammunition back into the gun once it runs dry. Now also, you'll notice, you're going to notice some similarities to this with my initial setup of how I load the gun every single time anyway. The mechanics are going to be the exact same. Uh, my positioning with my hands is going to be the exact same. We will be doing some demos with the cam just for the cameras here to show you guys exactly what's going on inside of those mechanics. But ultimately, reloads are reloads. Our goal is to get ammunition back into the gun or get more ammunition into the gun if we're, if we're running low. We have to be able to make that decision for ourselves. So if we've gone through a scenario where we burn through 10, 12 rounds and we know we only got 15 in the gun, we may want to try and find that other source that we have available to us and swap it out with something that's actually there. These can all be done almost the exact same way uh, or you can try and retain your magazines, anything you want to do. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I try to maintain a concept of reality. So for me, concept of reality is I pull from my pocket. I usually don't have a bunch of fancy mag pouches or Gucci gear hanging off of me at any given point in time, so I'm not going to sit there and be out here decked out in a full body armor setup with stuff hanging off of me, helmet, night vision, flares burning in the background, American flag, and screaming eagles. So this, this is how I work every day. So when I'm at work, when I'm traveling to and from work, and what I do, normally I have a spare magazine just shoved simply inside of a pocket. This is even true with rifle magazines. When I do competitions with rifle, I'll throw a rifle magazine in my back pocket and reload from that source. I mean, that's 60 rounds of ammunition. I'm not getting in a running gun battle in the streets of Fallujah here, guys. It's just 60 rounds of ammunition is a lot of ammunition to really, really have on you, especially if you're a competent shooter. Most of these people that are running around with duffel bags full of ammunition doing God knows what with them, they're carrying around a lot of ammunition because they're not confident in their abilities to make precise shots. Once you get to that point, you'll realize an extra magazine is a pretty handy thing to have around. Not only for, not only for the fact that you have an extra magazine source on you, but 90% of the weapons-related malfunctions that you're going to find are either ammunition-related or magazine-related. So if you fall down and crack this bottom plate of your magazine that's inside of your gun, and all of a sudden you do a speed unload where the magazine, where the magazine spring completely shoots out the bottom and dumps all your ammunition on the ground, you do not have a spare magazine source on you. You just deadlined your, your primary means of defense right there. So having an extra magazine so source is definitely something to think about in your day-to-day, -day, uh, every, everyday carry setup. So when we actually go into reloads and getting set up for these, <clears throat> so for the, for the sake of this demonstration, what I'm actually going to have set up is one round, one round in the chamber and then an empty magazine. So the slide will lock to the rear. So slide lock reload is actually very, very simple. We identify the problem. Usually we can do this just by changing our sight plane focus from the front sight post to the rear of the gun. If I can see the rear of the gun and everything's locked back like this, even from this angle right here, if you can't tell there's something wrong with the gun, you need to spend more time with your gun. So I can tell just by looking at it from this particular angle that, yep, I can see shadows under the back side of this gun. My sight is not where it's supposed to be. I can see a big hollow spot right up here on top. There's any number of things that you can look at on this gun that'll tell you exactly what's wrong with it. The other thing I don't need to do is this. Hmm. Yep, slides locked back to the rear. I already knew that by looking at the back of the gun. We should be able to tell from right here. Yep, slides, slides locked back from the rear. And all I'm doing is tracing the line from my front sight post all the way back to my rear sight post. And I can tell that slides locked back to the rear. Turning it 90 degrees and staring at it for another three seconds isn't going to give me any more information than I already have. All it's going to do is give that person three more seconds to close the distance from there to here. So, as I set up on that and make the identification that yes, there's something wrong with my gun. It, it is definitely out of ammunition. I need to get more ammunition into the gun. Well, we're going to take the exact same steps as when I set up, and you'll see this. So here's the consistency of motion of me loading my gun versus me doing a reload on my gun. <coughs> so as I come up and out, and out of my holster, I get my free rep to find my sights. I know the gun's clear because I've cleared it already. So I'm gonna index my primary load source. There it is. 
I've got, I've got it indexed in my hand. The bullets are facing forward. Every magazine has a flat and a round. I can feel this. Even if I close my eyes and grip it in my hand, I know that the flat is facing forward on me right now and the round is facing the back. So all I have to do is rotate it around, re-index, and I've found it. So, for the sake of the cameras, I'm gonna turn this way. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. As I've gripped my magazine with the round facing forward and the flat facing back, for me, this is how I actually index my magazines. For you, it may be something completely different. So, my workspace is up in front of my face. I'm looking over the front part of my gun and over the top of my hands. I'm going to take that half second to change my focal plane from downrange to right here. Once it's in, I'm back out, I'm back out on my thread again. Magazine seats. So, as we go back up down range, I'm gonna set up one more time. I've already gotten my free rep in. Fingers straighten off the trigger, break it down, roll the gun into my workspace. Index, set up, seat, rack. Gun is now live. So, not gonna go into the draw or anything else like that. We're gonna focus on the mechanics of the reload. So, as I present out and on target, I find my sights. Index, bang. Try to press again. Even if I don't identify there's a problem, if I need to do more work, I'm gonna try and press the trigger again. Nothing happens, it's locked back to the rear. That tells me something. Once again, receiving and processing information. This is what's gonna make us better as shooters. I receive the information, tactile response, that my trigger is pressed to the rear. The only way that that can happen and stay locked to the rear like this in a Glock semi-automatic pistol is if the slide is locked back to the rear. There's nothing resetting the trigger mechanism. So I'm taking in the information I have right there. My eyes track back. Yep, she's definitely empty. This gun is definitely out of, out of ammunition. So at this point, this hand can be doing something while this hand is doing something. My thumb is going to index down and find my magazine release. At the same time, my hand is going inside my pocket to find my other magazine. As I grip, I don't even need to look. I can tell you exactly where that is. This is the round. This is the flat. So I can index it without even looking at it. I can do it blind in my pocket. So I've already indexed this point as it comes out. Magazine indexes back in. Seats. Once I seat the magazine, I like to use my reaction thumb to reach up and grip. This allows me to maintain that camming motion with my opposite hand and sets me up for success. Meanwhile, if I sweep with this thumb, I gotta kinda readjust. So as I seat the magazine, my cam finger's already in place. Hit the, hit the slide stop, magazine's reset, and I can do my follow on shots. So, now I'm gonna go ahead and find my spent magazine source down here on the ground. Maintain my gun in a safe direction. Trap in between my index and forefinger. Swap out my magazine. Set it in. Now, I'm set up for my other drill. I can repeat this drill over and over again. What it also gave me the ability to do, it affords a magazine swap. A magazine swap is another reload method that we can utilize to get more ammunition in the gun. Like I said before, we burned through 10 or 12 rounds. We might need to put more ammunition into the gun. So I'm utilizing that, that swap method. I can do this the same way by indexing it from my pocket. I've got it right there inside the flats. All I'm gonna do is roll, press, stow. Everything's good to go. Might need to swap, set up for the drill again. There it is, in between my index and middle finger. Roll, swap, stow. That's all it is, is just gripping that magazine and getting, getting one source in, one source out, and then stone it and setting it up again. So, when we start to look at this, at what I'll refer, we've done it by a step by step at this point, so let's go ahead and take a peek at it, at what it would look like combat speed. So I'm gonna up the tempo a little bit, and I'm gonna keep rolling through this drill to show you the effectiveness of it, that I'm utilizing all my reload methods, all incorporated into one drill. And this should be something that you can do at your range and your training protocols or anything else like that. You can set it up any way you really want to. So, as I set up on target, come out, present, slow it down a little bit, get that up and seated. Find my reload source, quick swap, and stop. Set it up again for the next drill. We're already set up, we're ready to go. So keep going on like this. Bad follow through on that second shot, so we gotta fix that. So I'm identifying problems as we go. <sighs> Setting up again for the next shot. So.
better follow through on that one, settling it down. Swap and stow. It's easy as this. You can keep rolling for this as long as you want. You can have multiple magazines set up. This is a great drill to work all the mechanics. We got sight alignment, sight picture, trigger control, reloads, everything else all wrapped up into one easy little drill and all it is is a shot reload shot. So we keep going just like this. Setting up one more time. Nice and easy working our way down the line. Find my index source. <coughs> Swap and set. Keep working every single time. Really trying to push the tempo at this point. Get everything going. Find my shots. Picking it up as we go. All I'm doing is trying to get faster and faster as I do this until I find my failure point. So we've seen the mechanics of how we can work through different scenarios and utilize these reloads. Pocket reloads are not fast. I'm willing to give that up for the sake of being able to carry in a, in a much more concealed method. So if I carry on my belt, I got to deal with obtrusive materials and everything else like that. Especially if you're running smaller single stack guns, I know when I carry my shield on a regular basis, I always carry a backup mag for that thing because there's only eight rounds in the gun. But it's also a little flat magazine, it fits into a pocket really, really easy. The other thing to take into account that you really got to think about your mindset if you're going to start doing a pocket carry is your clothes. All right? If you're the type of person that likes to wear skinny jeans, yoga pants, anything else like that, guess what? You really can't be safe and sexy at the same time. So you're going to have to make the decision at this point, what are you willing to give up for something that you're willing to gain? Because there's no point in carrying a gun if you're going to walk around in yoga pants and have the print of it everywhere. All right? You're changing your lifestyle. It is a life-changing opportunity. You can still feel good about yourself, but you have to make the decision on what's gonna be best for you and the ones you care about, all right? So make the decision for yourself. This is just another fun little thing you guys can do at the range if there's something you wanna work on. We've shown you the mechanics of it and everything else like that. Once again, if you have anything that you'd like to see uh, us do on our Facebook page or our YouTube page, please contact us, get in touch with us, let us know what you wanna see and what you'd like to learn about more than anything else. And as always, if you have any other questions, just come right into the shop and we'll get it all set up for you.